Hey guys, the money supply is growing again here in the United States. And what that means is that it's time to buy some ETFs. I've got three, T three ETFs guys I wanna show you today. And I wanna explain why money supply is growing again, what that means for the larger market. Let's talk about it. Okay guys, so the current bull market is being driven by two things, big, tech and AI stocks. Key players, Nvidia, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Meta. These five companies alone, guys, have accounted for 63% of the S&P 500's returns in the first half of 2024. And what that means is that market concentration is nearing levels not seen since the 1970s. Big AI tech companies have propelled the bull market with strong earnings, but historically market concentration eventually reverses, right? So the money supply growth has a big impact on the overall economy. Decelerating money supply growth tends to increase market concentration among large stocks. Larger companies generate sufficient cash internally while smaller businesses struggle with tighter access to external funding. The capital intensive nature of AI businesses has further concentrated the market. However, it's changing. The US money supply grew rapidly back in 2020 due to government stimulus, Federal Reserve's near zero interest rates, M2 money supply, which includes easily accessible cash, deposit accounts, market money accounts, CDs, all those things grew slower from 2021 to early 2024. But after negative growth by late 2022, M2 began growing again in 2024, accelerating to 1.3% growth by July this year. And then we've got the rate cuts. Anticipated rate cuts in 2024 could further boost the money supply, leading to broader market participation. Chaudhry is the head of the European Quantitative Strategy at JP Morgan, and he his analysis suggests that as the money supply grows, we should see the market broaden beyond larger tech stocks. So that brings us to some great ETFs that are prepped just for this scenario. All right, so let me give you the very first one today. The first one is the Schwab Fundamental US Large Company ETF. The ticker is FNDX. This ETF ranks and weights securities by fundamentals like sales, cash flow, shareholder return, instead of market capitalization, reducing portfolio concentration. It still includes major companies like Apple, Microsoft, Berkshire Hathaway, but at lower weightings than an S&P 500 index and it rebalances by investing more in stocks with prices declining relative to their fundamentals, leading to a tilt towards large cap value stocks. All right, and with a 0.25% expense ratio, the fund offers less concentration than the S&P 500 and could outperform as market breadth increases. All right, so that's your very first one, the Schwab Fundamental US Large Company ETF. Now, let's look at number two, which is the Invesco S&P 500 Equal Weight ETF. This, the ticker for this is RSP. This tracks the S&P 500 Equal Weight Index, which gives each stock equal weight, diversifying exposure and giving smaller stocks equal importance to larger tech stocks. Rebal this is rebalanced quarterly, guys, to maintain equal weighting with historical outperformance over the cap-weighted S&P 500. It's 11.63% compound annual return since 2003 compares favorably to the S&P 500's 11.06%. Now, it has outperformed, or I, I should say it's underperformed recently, but its diversification makes it a strong candidate for market broadening. The ETF is cost effective with a 0.2% expense ratio, offering an inexpensive way to invest in large cap stocks as the money supply accelerates. 
And finally today, I've got the third ETF for you, which is the SPDR Portfolio S&P 600 Small Cap ETF. Ticker is SPSM. And it tracks the S&P 600 index, focusing on small cap US businesses that are consistently profitable. Unlike the Russell 2000, the S&P 600 requires profitability for inclusion, leading to a portfolio that leans towards value stocks. Small cap value stocks have historically outperformed and the S&P 600 currently has an attractive forward price to earnings ratio of only 14.5, significantly lower than the S&P 500's 20.2. And with an expense ratio of just 0.03%, this is an extremely low cost option for investors that are seeking to capitalize on undervalued small cap stocks. So put it all together, the the three ETFs that I've got for you today, the Schwab Fundamental US Large Company ETF, that will give you less concentrated approach to large cap investing. The Invesco S&P 500 Equal Weight ETF gives you diversification and exposure to smaller companies in the S&P 500. And then the SPDR Portfolio S&P 600 Small Cap ETF focuses on profitable small cap companies with attractive valuations. All three of these ETFs really target different types of investors, or maybe you're one of those people that really wants a lot of diversification. Maybe you pick up a piece of each one of these ETFs. Um, I'll tell you guys that I haven't, I haven't personally invested in any one of these ETFs. I prefer to invest in individual stocks but I'm constantly looking at the ETFs and so I have great friends that invest in ETFs and man, they are killing it, guys. So ETFs are definitely a lot safer route to take um, if you're not feeling too crazy. And as the money supply grows, market broadens, these ETFs are gonna offer you diverse, cost-effective ways to benefit from the easing monetary environment. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment down below, let me know what you think. And then subscribe because if you want to know about those individual stocks I was telling you about, um, the ones that I buy, I buy them every single week and I make a video specifically about the stock that I'm buying. Usually post those every Monday. So subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you do, remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Peace.